Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In this week's autopsy, the long-awaited gas meter. We've done an electric meter, we've done a water meter, and now we get to do a gas meter. The reason we had to wait on this one is we didn't have one. However, it turns out that they just go leaving these things stuck around on the side of every building on our street. And who's going to miss one? Everybody's got one. Some buildings have like three or four and nobody's going to miss one. So we're going to take this apart, explore the insides and autopsy the thing. Now, I've gotten a lot of email, a lot of comments and stuff from people who may have the perception that I am some manner of God and that I'm supposed to know everything there is to know about everything I take apart. That would kind of defeat the purpose of this video series because the point of this is to explore and to get you guys to explore stuff. So I don't know everything about everything. I don't have all the answers, but along the way together, we'll figure it out. We'll learn stuff and at the end of it, we'll walk away from this with a pretty good idea of what we're talking about. Now, the first thing I notice as I open into this is this screw right here. And uh, I'll, I'll hold it right there. You can see there's a little tiny hole in the end of the screw. Now that hole is for a piece of what's usually referred to as safety wire. You'll see this a lot in like aviation, space travel, race cars, things like that. And what it is is it's a way of sealing a screw for usually one of two reasons. The primary reason is so that if it's something that vibrates a lot, the screw can't work its way loose and fall out, that would be bad. That's why you see them a lot in race cars and aviation. In this application though, it probably has a security use. So they would screw these together or lace these together with a piece of safety wire and then put a little lead seal on it so that if somebody came along and opened up the gas meter to tamper with it to like try and steal gas, they'd know somebody was in there. So we'll pop off the little top cover. This meter was made by Rockwell, who has a pretty nifty logo. And judging by the logo, the materials, and the fact that deep inside here, you can see it says 78 right there. It says 78 off to the side. I'm guessing this meter was probably vintage to around 1978. So it's been around for a while. Now, on this side, we have inlet right here. You can see where it says inlet. And on this side, it's not labeled outlet, but there's a hole on the other side. And having seen these in use, I'm pretty sure that inlets where the pipe from the gas company went and outlet is the pipe that goes to your house. And the purpose of this is simply to measure the amount of gas that goes by. Now, that's really easy to do with water. It's really easy to do with water. It's pretty easy to do with electricity. But gas is pretty tricky because gas, like just, you can't just measure how much goes by. You have to compensate for differences in pressure, temperature. Temperature matters a lot. All kinds of stuff. The quality of the gas going by, there's, there's a lot involved. So gas meters have to be pretty specialty devices because you've got to be fair in how you bill people for gas. Fundamentally though, this just measures how many cubic feet of natural gas goes by and it doesn't care over what period of time. So it has to be able to handle high flow and low flow because the gas meter doesn't know if you're just running one little tiny thing to keep a pilot light going, you know, like maybe it's the summertime and you don't have your heat on and you're not using a water heater and stuff like that and you just got a pilot light so you just got a little tiny bit of gas going by. And maybe it's February and your heater's going full bore and you're cooking in the oven and the hot water heater's going and all that and you've got as much gas going through as you can and this has to be able to handle everything in between. So we've got the top off. I'm gonna open the front plate here though I don't think this is really necessary. There's more screws to take out and that's just a good excuse to take out screws. Screws in the cup. My nifty little blue magnetic dish. Okay, and this is the last one. Okay, let's take that off. There's a little gasket. So there's a little window. 
which is actually glass. 78, so. We'll get rid of the little gasket there. It has that 70s mechanical smell, but it doesn't smell like gas yet, which I'm thankful for, because I'm pretty sure the next phase of this is gonna stink pretty bad. So I gotta pop this seal. There we go. I have no idea what to expect inside. I'm actually really curious on this one. I'm trying to do it as delicately as I can. You're gonna have to get another screwdriver. Here's a useful skill to know. I'll do this around on the side so you can see it. If you have to pop a seam like this, sometimes it's really helpful to grab a screwdriver and spin it like that and then put another screwdriver in next to it and you can just walk this right around when you're taking things apart because yes, you could just bang your way into this, but you'd probably screw it up if you did that. I want to open this side a bit. So this way you can just walk it around and it's only going to open a little bit. It seems to be hanging up in the front here. Oh, and that's why it's hanging up in the front. If you look here, see how there's a little nub on the bottom where wherever there's a screw, there's a little nub on the bottom. Okay, like that. Well, there's a little nub right here, too, but there's a screw hidden behind this, so I'm going to have to open that up so we can get the screw, because I'll bet there's a screw hidden down inside there. Come on. It's like trying to take screws out the side of a football. It's, it's moving all over the place. Okay, so that's our entire counter mechanism, which is very, very simple. It's driven by one gear, which turns every time that goes around, it rolls a foot. Okay, and as I do this, it's just a, a decade counter. There's really nothing special to it. There's a little gear train down in the bottom. So this is kind of neat. And if I spin that around, you can see all the gears moving here. Neat little worm drive and a gear reduction system. So that's very, very simple. And we've been into those before. A nice little bronze bushing. And this is soldered on. There's another bronze bushing. Now we see there's the hidden screw. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, this whole thing might just... Oh, look at that. That comes right off. Nothing to it. And we are greeted with all kinds of awesome stuff happening up here. This is neat. This is nothing. I didn't really know what to expect, but it wasn't this. So, look at that. It's a whole pantograph system. This is really cool. So that one goes over that way, and then this one goes around, and that's how it moves. So what are these? What are the, what's this doing here? These are valves. These are simply valves on top here. They're slide valves. And as this moves around, it's moving around this bar, And this bar is our readout. So if I turn this like this, you can really see this work here. See, and you've got to move these in time with each other. That's really neat. I don't know what I expected to see in here, but it wasn't that. All right, well, I'm going to try really hard to do the rest of this in such a way where we can get back to this point because this is really cool 
and I'd like to keep this as a, an operating mechanism. So we have to dig down inside. Before, before we dig into this, I want to talk about the linkage on top here. This is kind of a pantograph, but not really. It's, it's pantography. We'll say it's pantographic. Because this shape with the crossed arms and the pins to a shared point is kind of like a pantograph. But in a real pantograph, usually there'd be a, a thing here and it would hold it together. This really is just a, a complicated system of levers. Now these are adjustable right here. You can see this can be adjusted here. And at first I thought these were counterweights, but they're not. What these are for is you can adjust this little block back and forth this way with these two nuts. And with these two nuts here, you can adjust a little block in and out on the lever. So the power seems to come from down below through these two shafts, and that moves these. And if you look, all right, this is a crank operated by something down there, and this outputs a linear motion. Okay, if you look at it, it sweeps one way and it sweeps the other. Just, just ignore everything else and look just at this bar because this is where the power is coming from, okay? So first the bar turns this way, and then it stops right there. That's its apex. And then it turns this way, and then it stops. And that's all that bar is doing. It's turning that way and then back. Do, ba do, ba do, ba do. Now while this is doing that, this bar, okay, when this one hits its apex that way, so we're, we're here when this bar hits its apex. But we're here, we're 90 degrees off. That's this bar's apex. I go 90 degrees off and this bar hits its apex. So these two things are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. I wonder what would happen You guys want to try something cool? Give me just a minute to try a quick idea. I'll be right back. All right, so we're going to try this on compressed air and see what happens. So we've hooked up an airline. And see, we blow, we're blowing air right out the top. So it has to go down, and that's why these valves are here. So we can make this work, but we'd have to put the top on for it to work. I wonder though, if I feed it from the other side, if I feed it backwards, if it'd work. Let's try that. We'll take the connection off here, we'll unscrew the whole thing, and put it in the other side, and we'll feed it backwards and see if that does it. Because this side, it blows out the top, and the only way to seal that would be to put this on top and put the lid back on it, and you're not gonna be able to see anything, and that'll just suck. So let's try it the other way. So I need a big pair of pliers. Hey, Doogie. Yeah. Come here a minute. I'm going to hold this, and you're going to spin the whole meter. OK, you want to go, yep, that way, so that our high-tech system <laughs> <laughs> of gas connection <laughs> remains intact. <laughs> All right, spin that around <laughs> and now spin it towards you. And we'll just thread that right on there. Now we're feeding it backwards and we're just going to hope this doesn't break it and we'll hope that it actually does something. Okay, you good there? Yeah, I think, I think that'd be about all right. We're, we're not asking a lot of it. Thank you, sir. All right, now let's see if this does anything at all. It'll either work or it won't. Can you, there we go. That is so cool. That is so cool.
That's really nifty. And that's with barely any pressure in there. All right, so that was a little test off of just, we have just a, a little air cylinder that we use around a shop, usually to like refill a tire or something for places you can't take an air compressor. So what we're gonna try and do, because that was really cool, I wanna see how fast this will go. I wanna see what it'll do, because what's the worst that can happen? We break it. So we proved that it'll work backwards, and we can make all the linkages work, and I think that's really cool. So the next step is we're gonna try and get a hose all the way from the main demonstration hall where we have the big machine shop and the giant air compressor. We're gonna try and hook together enough pieces of air hose to feed all the way here to the set so that we can run this off full on raw shop air. If we can make this work, we might be able to break something, or at the very least, because my ultimate goal here is to try and get to go like because I think that'd be pretty cool. So we're going to give that a shot. And right now, Doogie and God knows who else is running around trying like crazy to get us a big air hose that'll go all the way to here. All right, so Doogie rocked out and got us real shop air. Now remember, we're feeding this backwards, so I don't know how well it'll take this, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. I'm experiencing a lot of valve float. These these valves here are like popping up. You can see they they really they got a lot of movement to them. So if you watch the valves, because they're designed to be pushed down, not up. So I'll try holding them down and see if that helps. See, with a little down pressure, they really, they, they do a lot better. If I could add like a little spring here, or tighten that screw, if I could make that screw tighter, that might do it. This is really cool. There's really no better way to hold those down than that, but I kind of blocked the camera a little bit. All right, let's get a look at what's happening down inside there. I want to do this carefully because I want to be able to put this back together when we're done. So for these screws, oh, these screws are, yeah, these screws are totally different, so we're okay. The hissing sound you hear is the leaking on our rather crudely rigged air system. If it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. I would not do this with natural gas. Now down inside, I expect to find properly, probably a really big diaphragm or a bellow or something like that because this would have to be a positive displacement pump. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. How cool is that? And this down inside you can see is divided. There's a, a separating wall that goes between these. So first one side works and then the other. And I don't begin to know how we'd have to we'd have to pump air into this one and then it goes it goes out well it goes in the valves and out here so we'd have to put a vacuum on that side to make that work but that's really cool this has to look like some crude iron lung looking thing when it's working and the date on the side here of the bellows 
is March 26th, 1961. You can see it right down there. March 26, 1961. So that's, that's our date. And these move in and out like that. And you can, you can see how the whole mechanism works right there. That's really cool. I think long term, I need to make a Lexan box and house this whole thing in Lexan so that we can have this as an operating demonstration here at the lab. I think this would be a really cool thing for people to get to see. It's just too cool not to. And there's really nothing to be gained by taking it any further apart. So I think this is a very, very successful autopsy right there. We got to learn all about the inside of gas meters. That is so cool. It goes down just like that into its happy little home. If we give it a little gas. That's so cool. All right. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and getting to have this fun. This is really neat. I've had a lot of fun on the meter series, and if there's any other kind of meters you want to see us take apart an autopsy, let me know. Comment below, and we'll see if we can find any other interesting meters. We've done electric, we've done water, and now we've done gas. What other kind of meters would you like to see? What do you want to explore? Because together, I am totally cool with us checking out anything you want. I'm Chris Bowden, and if you're into science and technology and the way things work and building your own stuff, check out thegeekgroup.org because you're not alone. There's about 25,000 of you out there, and it's guys just like you, guys that like to tinker and take things apart and see how the world works, and that is how it all begins, is by exploring, hey, I didn't know you could do that, and learning about mechanisms and linkages and all kinds of cool stuff. So we're out there. We're here for you. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.